All right, we're live. Uh, welcome to Game Chat. We are the Game Club Coalition. My name is Sean, and uh, my partner to the side here is Chase. Uh, today we're going to be running down some video game news. Uh, this is a new project we got going on. This is going to be episodic at least every week. So if you enjoy the content that we're creating, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Uh, getting on over to the this week's uh, stories. Let's see what we got here in store. So new PS5 features discovered in the PlayStation Store's source code. Uh, looks here that uh, wish lists are... Uh, according to the website that they've dug it into, wish lists are going to be available, um, as well as parties with up to 100 people, which is pretty crazy. Um, and then uh, they're also speaking of PS5 boost mode features uh, will be marked on specific games on where it uh, will work. Uh, this kind of plays into some Xbox backwards compatibility that we'll talk about later. Um, Chase, what are your thoughts on this? Uh <laughs> I just think about the hundred people parties, and I just can't help but think like, who has a hundred friends <laughs> or ninety nine other people that they want to have in a party? So like, um, I don't know. <laughs> Are you gonna run an entire Fortnite game or something <laughs> like? I have no idea. Yeah, but, I um, mean, it's like hard enough on uh, you know, s some games when you're doing raids in six, eight, ten people, maybe even more, especially in World of Warcraft, where it's like hard to that many people talking over each other. Yeah, right, like, what are you gonna do, just talk over each other? It's hard enough to just talk with, like, one person off and on, because we'll interrupt each other infinitely. Um, but the, uh, the the wish list is like, yeah, it's cool. <laughs> I don't know, it's like, it's like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, it's not, is that newsworthy? But it's cool. I mean, I guess Epic Games doesn't have a, a shopping cart. So. That's that's true. And in <laughs> the wish <laughs> the wish list feature is something that's been on Steam for a long time. I don't use it a ton, but it is nice. Uh, if you got games on your wish list, it will notify you when they go on sale. So if it's in a similar fashion, that would be super cool. But yeah, I'm kind of in the same boat where it's like, eh. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad it's there. Yeah. I don't know. Everybody's just starved for PlayStation information right now. That it's just like, there's a wish list. A hundred friends. <laughs> No, like, what does it look like though? What does it look? What does it look like though? Yeah, no, I I totally agree. <laughs> Absolutely, uh, PlayStation's been kind of lacking on their information, and it does feel like every little detail that we can grasp onto, we're like really reaching out, uh, you know, <laughs> like everything. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, and somebody leaked the video, and they're they're talking about whatever, and it's like, uh, okay, but can we just like see it now? Like, Microsoft's out there handing the consoles out, and like Sony's. <laughs> waiting like i don't know man you think it would just be more like go at it but i guess not <laughs> but the, but the backwards compatibility thing though uh down to the xbox stuff is really sweet i'm again buying a ps5 so i'm, I'm curious about how sony's gonna do it because they have so much safe game i don't know we'll talk about that i'm sure but the uh the Series X, like, hearing about the performance of, like, Red Dead 2, like, what, they are saying 60 frames, I think? Yeah. Like, like that's sick. Like, that alone, I'm excited to play next-gen, or on a next-gen console, my old game. I don't know how Sony's gonna do it, <laughs> so I don't know. Am I gonna have to pay extra? Am I gonna have to pay extra to transfer my fucking save files or yeah, something? Yeah, right. Like, I don't know. Uh, but, and leading in on that, we've actually got our uh, uh, next... Uh, bullet point or headline is the Spider-Man remaster changes, uh, including Peter Parker's face. Uh, this has been huge controversy surrounding this. Um, you know, they did say that the new actor, Ben Jordan, kind of, uh, you know, they, they wanted to bring out the best possible visuals for the remastered version of the game, and they needed a better match for the facial capture done by Yuri Lowenthal who is the voice actor of uh, Peter Parker in this. Um, they did also come out and say that, uh, who was it, Brian Intner uh, tweeted saying that, you know, today's news about the Peter Parker face model has surprised some of you, and we at Insomniac totally understand your reaction. Heck, it even took me a while to get used to Peter's new look. But as we discussed the franchise's future and moving to the PS5, it quickly became apparent that delivering even more believably looking characters made finding a better facial match for actor Yuri Lowenthal, who we all love as Peter, a necessity. Um, 
And a slight update is I was just reading earlier uh, today that uh, he's now getting death threats over this. Yeah, I was I was about to comment on that, and it's like it's funny that they quoted this, but we all know it was a screenshot, it was a photo of a text document on a computer that was tweeted <laughs> from him. Like, <laughs> let's not let's not like gloss over the fact that they took the time to type that out. They couldn't even copy and paste that. So, uh, way to go! What site is that? Um, uh, Polygon. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. Good journalism there. You actually wrote it out. Um, thank you. So just posting the damn picture. But uh, yeah, I just saw his tweet. Um, Corey Barlog from Sony Santa Monica, and you know, doing God of War and everything, was saying how just disgusting it is. It is crazy, man. It's just a video game. Yeah, a- absolutely. I also saw. A... <laughs> I also saw Neil Druckmann <laughs> respond like, you know, it sucks that you got to deal with this. Uh, and he knows uh, all too well the same deal with The Last of Us. Uh, yeah. I, I do oh, think shit. it's a little bit too much to freak out over. I, I do like the character model upgrade. Um, I actually like the new actor, I think, a little bit more. I, I feel like it represents the age that Peter's supposed to be in the game a little bit better. Because sure. what is it, like 23, 24, something like that? Yeah, um, I guess canon, yeah. 23 in this one. Yeah, so I, I feel like it's a good fit. It even kind of looks a little bit more like the Tom Holland Spider-Man. Um you could and, say it in store brand, Tom yeah. Holland. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but whatever, dude. Like, it's fine. Uh, but, you know, I didn't get to, the chance to play a lot of this game. Um, my only gripe is that, from my understanding right now, the new character model will only be in the PS5 version while they're leaving the original character model in the PS4 version, which I think is a little bit weird um, to not update that as well if it if it's possible then again maybe it's not possible I'm not really sure but I, I feel like it would have been nice to have that character change in the old one so that continuity stayed the same if they plan to keep the PlayStation 4 around for a while yeah that's a that's actually a good point um, I know we've kind of like touched on this before like off camera but like um, yeah when you're saying like it'd be weird and I'm like whatever dude you're just gonna buy the remaster it doesn't matter and you're like yeah but the remaster doesn't play on the ps4 idiot and it's like oh yeah i guess that makes sense like it, it is weird and we're so used to the spider-man movies and all the superhero movies just like we've got andrew garfield we've got tom holland we've got the other guy <laughs> what's his name toby mcguire oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I, I love those movies i don't care uh, not the third one so much but um but they're all different stories and different timelines different iterations of spider-man so it's like now it's like here's this spider-man and then here's this spider-man doing the exact same thing different actor i don't know in the long run i don't think it matters but it is weird there's no way to get around how weird it is but it's yeah i think he looks great though i like the new character model um i i do a lot too i I really felt like uh what i did play of the other spider-man like Especially now having the the comparison of the two, I know a lot of people were saying that he looks like way too young, like he's like 16 or 18 or something. But uh, uh, I I thought the other Spider-Man looked a little bit older. Like I'm yeah. I'm a little bit older guy in my 30s, and and even though they were saying that he was young, I, I really felt his age was depicted to be you know 28, 30. That's what it looked like to me. Not that it like broke any immersion for me it's kind of whatever oh. peter is peter right and again like right. you've said through all the spider-man movies we've seen various actors and even going back to batman we've had what feels like a dozen but it's like what four five six different batmans like they're no stranger to being recast and if it made sense to to change the character now to help out the rest of the series to keep continuity i'm okay with I that yeah i really think that that's what it was like you it's um it's, it's probably hard to keep these actors now that we're not just like taking an animation or a character rig and just like animating it. Like we're doing so much facial capture and all of that nowadays that it's like this one probably just worked out. Yeah, it probably just worked out better either schedule wise or just overall the performance. Like, I mean, you know, that 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 all matters. Now, does that mean we're going to have the same voice actor? Like, are they going to carry the same voice actor along with this new visual guy or are they going to redo everything no you know? i think they that's what they were saying is uh they were trying to find a better face model match for yuri who is the guy that is the voice actor and they intend to keep him and they all love him as as peter but they're not using his face so they were trying to make a better match it's which too ugly no i'm just kidding 
I don't know. <laughs> uh, that's so true. Oh, here, here. You got a, you got a, you got a Facebook radio, buddy. You yeah. need a voice in our game. <laughs> where's, where's all uh, my facial capture stuff? Yeah. Uh, don't worry about it. <laughs> Just do the voice. <laughs> Hilarious. All right. Well, uh, moving on to the next uh, subject here, <laughs> yeah. we've got um, you know one more earlier... thing about that Peter Parker though. Being oh yeah. Younger, it's like I go to I teach college courses twice a week. He looks like a college student. That's yeah. Uh, he looks I, like a college student. I think 100%. so as well. I think so as well. Um, so <laughs> earlier in the week, or uh, you know, it was reported that. Uh, the developer of Yakuza Like a Dragon confirmed that the PlayStation 4 save files can't be transferred over to the PS5. And now Codemaster has gone and said the same about Dirt 5. However, uh, this is not the case on Microsoft's platforms, uh, to which Codemasters re- reported, currently on Xbox, all progress can be carried over between generations. Uh, Xbox was... Uh, oh, it looks like the little thing... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> moved away uh, <laughs> which is pretty funny here let me refresh the page and see if we can get it back oh, oh there it goes uh so uh aaron greenberg who is the marketing boss at xbox went ahead and said at xbox we put gamers first and then he shared the tweet from larry herb xbox lives major nelson to where he said cloud saves and four generations of compatibility means i pick up right where i left off in fallout 4 from the comfort of my xbox series x saved game and progress on my level 52 character check fast loading and quick resume mean more time to help settlements check uh so this is uh as somebody that's kind of you know across the board i'm i'm in with all uh i've got all options and opinions you know i'm now bias or fanboy of one group or another uh this does kind of not look great on playstation since the save files can't be transferred over yet xbox is somehow doing it yeah uh agreed as somebody who primarily plays on playstation um not against the other ones i do lean playstation though because they have series that i like uh yeah, this is a bummer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have like a like. But Sony's gonna do nah. It just sucks. Like it. It definitely doesn't look great, right? Like it's the no. uh, like the the, like... the couple of missteps that Sony's had um, coming up to this lack of information among other things, and and for Xbox to kind of have this cross compatibility is uh, in in PlayStation to not. It it just doesn't look good in comparison. Yeah, well, and it's it's a it's the it's the, again it's the flip it's the the polarities changing in this generation just like happened for 360 and Xbox One and PS3 and the PS4 like Microsoft went in with everything to lose from 360 to Xbox One and then Sony tried really hard to like fight back and now Sony's like comfortable and Microsoft's like well, hold on a second did all this crazy stuff that's great and everybody's loving it. And Sony's just quiet, and it's like they—they're confident in their platform, but we need clarity. Like it's like I pre-ordered the console, and I don't know what I'm getting besides a Demon Souls machine at this. Point. <laughs> yeah, like, I know it's gonna, it's gonna play my old games, but like, is it gonna play them better like the Series X? Like X, Series X is answering all the questions that I want answered for the PS5, right? Yeah, like, yeah, absolutely. And and it's always kind of been Xbox's. <laughs> right it's and it's always been xbox's thing to be this like they you know originally with the xbox one they were trying to make this all-in-one you know system or whatever but they really over the years they kind of like one platform so to speak right like with pc i remember the first time when uh, uh about two years ago when i got a pc together and went to go play for uh forza horizon 4 or whatever it is and I was like, oh, yeah, let me boot this up and see how good this looks. And it was like, oh, syncing with Microsoft account. And there it was, cloud save. Um, pulled up all the cars I had yeah. unlocked all my time. That's... And uh, more recently with um, Quantum Break, where, like, I don't even remember when I played that on Xbox in 2016 when it came out. And I went to go replay it on PC because it was on sale, boot it up. And it's like, there it is, my save file transferred over. Um, so that's kind of always been their thing. It's so crazy. Yeah. <clears throat> 
Um, well, it's so easy for them because they don't have any games. So <laughs> I'm, not, I'm joking. <laughs> right. It's so easy for them. They have enough space for the cloud saves to work because there's no games in the cloud. <laughs> uh, I, I'm a Sony fanboy. <laughs> so true. Uh, no, but I, I think that that kind of is a testament to Xbox's kind of you know backwards compatibility with Xbox 360 and Xbox OG and games that carry over. And they've kind of always been this, um, or not always been, but they're really coming into their own as this like we just want you to play our games, right? Play on any platform if you've got. A 360, an Xbox One S, an Xbox One X, a PC, Series S, Series X, mobile with uh, uh, X Cloud right now in the Game Pass Ultimate. Like they're they're trying to be that all in one. It's like, hey, just come play our games. We don't care what you got or how you play it, but just play it. Right. Yeah, and that's like like as we were transitioning to this generation, we've talked about it before, but like their their focuses are so different. Like, they bo- they both want to sell machines or whatever and make games and yeah. get games out to everybody. Like, that's obvious. But, like, their approaches to doing that are so different. Like, Microsoft has this, like, um, they've been running hard with all of this, like, back-end stuff to make this library of games available to everybody on any platform. And Sony's like, that's not sustainable. We just make really good exclusives. And it's like, that's cool. It's just different. Like, you know, it's it's... Sony is so in between Nintendo in terms of their lockdown and then Microsoft in terms of the power of their machine. I feel like Sony's like right in the middle of this like I don't know. It's a weird power struggle, I guess. Like I it's like they're fighting but they're not on the same planet. <laughs> right. Well, it's and that, that that's a good point, right? Because Nintendo's in this this handheld marketplace really and and also this console space there nintendo always like competes with their self essentially right and the yeah. thing that's they just with nintendo killed their own is, console three, it's it's not yes. even right well and it's not even that it's like oh nintendo's got the exclusives they just have all of their own ips like more than like more than them being an exclusive game it is all in-house yeah, it's just there it's their properties like that's really what sells that system right and sony is going hard with like we it's believe like in generations problem. Um, you know, we want these multiple consoles and, and, and every iteration is different and there isn't a whole lot of crossover. And then Xbox is kind of like, what do you got? Where, where can you play? Yeah. Yeah. You know, what like, do you exactly. got? Like, hey, you, you, you got a phone. You want to play Gears of War? I got you. <laughs> I got you, dude. Like, do you have an Xbox or a PC? I don't care. You got an Android phone? 15 bucks a month, bro. What do you have? Right. Download it. Right. <laughs> Stream it. Whatever. Um. Yeah, it's 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 cool though. It's I I was definitely like oh, F Xbox. So if anybody watches this video way back like in the future, like the saved video somewhere, like yeah, like Chase is like all PlayStation, whatever. I started on an Xbox, never had a PS2, went to an Xbox three sixty, Demon Souls came out, PS3, whatever. But definitely um it's interesting to watch now because I felt like Microsoft just didn't do anything last generation. Yeah. Really? The Xbox One it was like they had a few solid titles, but that's it. No, I, I, I think I, studios, I guess. Right. Yeah, and I think <laughs> I, I had told you in a previous conversation where it was like when I was looking back at the games that I like actually bought on Xbox One that wasn't a part of Game Pass that like I went out of my way, especially, you know, because Game Pass is kind of a newer thing. Right. But like for the first couple of years of the console, my main games were like Destiny and then the Horizon series, um, Forza Horizon Racing. Like, you know, you got your staple Gears of War and stuff, but like there wasn't anything where I was like, man, I can already list off more uh, fun adventure single player games on PlayStation in God of War, Horizon Zero Dawn, Last of Us 1 and 2, um, Ratchet and Clank. Like there's all these like great experiences to be had. Oh, Bloodborne, yes, absolutely. <laughs> the reason I bought a PlayStation so many years ago. But yeah, like Xbox, they just, they didn't have anything, right? And they just got off to, you know, out of the gate in a bad way. And Phil Spencer spent the better part of the last five or six years since he's been in control trying to, you know, turn the, the steamboat around, but it's taken a while. But I, I think they've got a nice trajectory going into this next generation. And again, because they're all kind of targeting these different markets, um, I think we're in a good position that it doesn't really feel like as much of a war anymore. But 
uh, I know our next topic is probably surrounding their big acquisition. So things might change. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Even further. <laughs> right. So, yeah, let's uh, switch over to that one. Uh, we got here. <laughs> Um, The Bethesda founder comments on Microsoft's acquisition of the company saying what Microsoft owns, Sony cannot get. Um, And now this is one of the founders of Bethesda who left the company more than a decade ago. And he can kind of speak speak freely on the deal. He's not affiliated or associated or under any NDAs or anything. Um, But when he was asked a couple of questions about this merger, uh, the most interesting thing that he said was that I do not think it's an accident that this announcement occurred so close to Sony PS5 announcement. There are only a limited number of proven creators of AAA and what Microsoft owns, Sony cannot get. Now, this is a pretty big acquisition covered by uh, probably millions of media outlets at this point with uh, Xbox acquiring Bethesda. But, um, you know, what are your kind of thoughts on this whole thing, Chase? Um, It's (laughs) that's huge. It's crazy. 7.5 billion cash. Microsoft was like, nah. Um, <laughs> but I feel like it's kind of unprecedented. Like studios are purchased all the time and under and pulled into exclusivity with like different series and IPs and all that. But this is the first time I think, unless I'm wrong, um, that a company that houses from like Xbox purchase something so large that has always been widespread available on everything. I mean, look at Skyrim. It's on a microwave or whatever. <laughs> like, you can play it in a damn refrigerator. I don't know. Back of this Doom can. on a pregnancy like, test, you know? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. That was pretty impressive. But, like, um, it's interesting. I, I And the way Phil Spencer speaks and even, um, what's his name? Uh, Howard, Todd Howard. Todd Howard. Yeah. Yeah, it speaks about the whole thing. They're very cagey on the information, but they make it sound like they want it everywhere still. But it's also Xbox's platform is everywhere, like we previously stated. So it's like, do they just mean using their portal to get their games? I don't know. It's weird. I I think it'd be crazy to shut off PlayStation from those big titles, not because of PlayStation, but because of the amount of people that are going to be on that platform regardless. That's a lot of money on the table. But Microsoft has a lot of money already, so <laughs> <laughs> they can they can do something yeah. like it's fifty fifty. I could see them going both ways, making money on PlayStation, making it come to Game Pass and Xbox and Windows first. Uh, whether it's even a week early, seventy bucks on PlayStation because that right. seems to be the cool thing to do, and then or even a year exclusivity and coming out, or just caging it up. I don't know. That's well, a, those are big IPs though. It, he, and it, and I think you're right. Like, I can't think of a whole lot of, you know, the only thing that I would be able to pull out of memory is Bayonetta, where it was like at one time, you know, across multiple yeah. consoles and then they got bought up and then it became exclusive to Nintendo or whatever. But like, again, that was, it was still like one game, right? Yeah, it was like it was, Bayonetta. It was Bayonetta 2, technically, and they redid Bayonetta and then maybe they had one other game. I don't even remember. But, but then they got pushed. Then they opened it back up, though, later. Yeah, they went public they again. Yeah. But, like you said, like this is this is a pretty big deal, and you know, there's part of me that's like, oh, well, perhaps they'll take all of those those beloved franchise games and keep them, you know, available on all platforms, and then maybe just new stuff created by any of these companies under Zenimax, um, you know, then they would be their, you know, Microsoft's IP. Um, and one of the big things to note here is that the acquisition was Microsoft purchasing. Yeah. Zenimax and not Xbox. So they are there there is a lot of wiggle room there. But again, you know, I think Todd Howard said at one point in this acquisition, like we don't care what you play on, where you play, or what kind of controller you use. And it was like, oh yeah, this is gonna be totally cool. They're they're not taking it away. And then it's like, well, anywhere you play, that could be X Cloud, Xbox One. Yeah, right. (laughs) Like um, Oh, any controller? Well, there's the Microsoft Adaptive controller. There's uh, Touchpad and XCloud. There's the Xbox One controller, Xbox Series X controller. Like, there's so many things where it's like. Oh. And if you're XClouding, if you're XClouding on an Android phone, Bluetooth and a PS4 or five controller to it, like literally any yeah. controller does. Right. PlayStation. Doesn't right. matter whatever like, you want, right? <laughs> but it, but then want. it's also like, if they wanted it it's just weird because it's like they could just do a power play and be like 
just Xbox and Windows, mother, you know, like, boom, here we go. But they're just being so cagey about it. It's like case by case, case, you know, case by case, like release uh, situations and exclusivity. They're still honoring their contracts with uh, Tokyo or Ghostwire Tokyo and um, the what's that other game they're doing? There's another one on PlayStation. Death yeah. Room? Yeah, Deathloop. 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 That's what Deathloop. it is. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Yeah. So obviously, in contract, they're going to. They have to honor that. But um, it's weird. It's they totally still up in the get air. That money, though. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like they have nothing to lose by having putting it everywhere. But as somebody who just a year ago got in vehement our blood battles with people at work uh, about how I like exclusivity on PlayStation, having these games available to me and my buddies on PlayStation. Um, now I, I can't, I can't, I can't really stand by that and not be a hypocrite. Right. So it's like, if they, Hey, if they take it, they deserve it. They bought it. It's their property. Do whatever you want. Like that's fair. I'll buy an Xbox or I'll build a PC. That's, that's what it is. Like I go where the games are. Um, but again, PlayStation's games aren't good because they're exclusives. They're good because they're just good games. Like their exclusives are good. Right. They're not good because they're exclusives. So, um, yeah, if Microsoft makes that play and it's like, nope, only Xbox and Windows, it's like, okay, <laughs> you might have another person to buy your console. Put that in your little hash mark, or whatever. Yeah, but, right. yeah, weird though, dude. Crazy. You texted me that though. I know I probably should move on, but like, you texted me that, and I woke up to that news, and it ruined my day. It <laughs> fucked me up, dude. Like I was like, I can't even comprehend what's happening, and it's like. It was right before pre-orders went live with the Xbox. It was just like, yeah. it, it was like perfect moving timing, the right? <laughs> yeah, and, and checking the king because, like, let's be honest, PlayStation destroyed last generation yeah. in sales and games, whatever. Absolutely. But here's the king, here's the queen, and the king has space to move, but not much. <laughs> and they're not right. moving. They're right. not moving. <laughs> and, and it and it puts this big, you know, uh, I don't know, up in the air for people too, yeah. right? People that were like, yeah, I'm getting PS5, I'm gonna get Elder Scrolls Six or whatever, Fallout. like Doom, Fallout 77, like <laughs> whatever. Yeah, Fallout Miami. Is that even a real thing? I don't know. I was just, I just saw some video for a game called Fallout Miami. Is it real? I don't what? know. Yeah, oh. <laughs> legitimately, we'll have to check it out after. But um, yeah, uh, like. Oh wait! Now I can't play those on the thing that I was gonna get. Like, am I gonna have to buy an Xbox? Like, screw you! I don't want to have any part of that. So, uh, yeah. yeah, it's definitely interesting future we got. But hey, Todd Howard uh, said it best, man. He didn't say it, but uh, he got us all to buy Skyrim every month right. on Game Pass. <laughs> <laughs> so true. So true. Uh, all right, moving on to the last and final topic. Uh, this is uh, um, in regards to a, uh, I should have taken better notes on this one too, but uh, I'll have to fill in the best I can. This is in regards to a Digital Foundry um, Xbox Series X backwards compatibility. Uh, they got early access to the console as a lot of YouTubers did. Um, and they showed some pretty impressive results um, for a lot of the games they tested. Uh, and he specifically targeted games that had like an unlocked frame rate essentially, or had the ability to turn the frame rate off. And on the Xbox One X, where games were, you know, unlocked frame rate, and it might be kind of wavering in the 50s, in the Xbox Series awesome. S, you're getting rock solid 60 frames per second performance. And this goes across multiple games in multiple different versions, Final Fantasy 15 being one of the huge ones where in its uh, unlocked state, which I think it might be all the time. I can't remember if they ever put a cap on it, but they're showing uh, in performance mode um, on the Xbox One X running at, you know, 30 to 40 frames per second. On the Series X, it's a rock solid 60 frames per second. And then you're also benefiting from the um, solid state um, uh, performance <clears throat> increase for uh, load times, which on this game was also pretty long. So. Um, I thought this was pretty crazy. I really hope to see similar results from PlayStation in their boost mode. But, um, you know, f for Xbox coming into the next generation and not really having any games, <laughs> so to speak, that's like, oh, this is the reason to buy a Series X or Series S. Um, 
this backwards compatibility in this intergenerational time period that we're in right now to be able to go back and play games that you want to play or the older games are still more recent at like better frame rates potentially better graphics if uh people you know update any of the code but that was one of the important things is in all of this video which i will have linked down in the the description of, of uh this in the after broadcast um it uh you know he just shows a huge performance increase right, right here what i'm showing right now is hitman on 4k mode in Xbox One X hovering 30 to 40, Xbox Series S rock solid 60 frames per second, 4K quality. Like this is impressive stuff. Yeah, that's um that's nuts. Uh again, super impressive. I, I know that they've taken backwards compatibility very seriously. I mean, some of the best parts of the one of the what do you call it? The Xbox One series the xbox one <laughs> the xbox terrible one naming one convention X. god i hate it um the one x and everything like it's just um it's cool to see it not just be playable but just be boosted man like be be next gen like yeah i know that pc gamers have the luxury of just being like crank it up we're good you know but like right. this is huge for for console gamers and like um yeah, Microsoft ha doesn't have a bunch of like new big exclusives, but like one thing they do have is Game Pass and backwards compatibility. Like that's two yeah. things. Yeah, and, and this this increased performance, the ability for it to really take over and do this for a lot of these games, I I've, I think is pretty impressive. And they're in that video uh, in Digital Foundry, they were talking about um, this like secret sauce, some sort of thing that Microsoft's working on to be able to take games that are 30 frames per second that don't get updated and double the frame rate. Now, I don't know if that'll look good or if it'll be soap opery That's or like motion blur. Game. Yeah, I'm, it, there's gotta be something going on, but uh, either way, the the performance increase that we're seeing, like it, it makes me very happy because I feel like we need to be in the generation of targeting 60 FPS, like yeah. any game, uh, you know, demon souls what i the last thing that i heard is that the they're gonna have a performance mode that's 1440p 60 fps or 4k 30. i'm going for that 60 fps i want okay. that smooth gameplay yeah. um and you know one of the biggest reasons why i'm even interested in a playstation 5 is going back and playing some of the games like god of war and possibly horizon zero dawn or uh oh, yeah. a couple of other games maybe even bloodborne you know and hoping for some sort of boosted performance hope, that, hope those save files carry baby <laughs> i got some good loot right. bloodborne yeah. man like shoot. right uh no but that, that honestly was one of the first things i thought about with the ps5 and them having backwards compatibility on ps4 god of war at 60 like that's what red i want dead, man. red dead 2 at 60 like red yes. dead 2 is a beautiful game yeah I would honestly take a smooth, consistent frame rate over four. Like fourteen forty p looks really good. Like yeah. it does. Like, and, and I think in every upscaling version that I've seen on PlayStation or Xbox, you know, when uh, it turns yeah. out to be like it's a native fourteen forty, like Ratchet and Clank, and then they use this temporal uh, injection or something, or any of the the checkerboard um, running, whatever they call it, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Like, I, I feel like you can tell the difference between 1440 upscaled and 1080p upscaled, right? Like, it looks yeah, better. Sure. I would rather have that and have a little bit better frame rate or more consistency than have this, like, oh, gorgeous quality that feels choppy at this point in my life. Like, right. Yeah. And the, yeah, after you've been playing PC for a few years, you're like, it's not 120. <laughs> Get out of here. Um, but the, uh, I, I think I, seeing. If you go back to uh, even the Spider-Man stuff, right? So they had like the performance mode for Master versus the like the ray tracing. They're using the images kind of like because yeah. they had all those like high quality images from um, like with all the ray tracing and stuff on there, right? And it's like that looks really good, but that that is going to be the one that's going to be 30 frames, right? Um, but watching it in motion in 60 frames. I'll take it. <laughs> yeah. I know. Yeah. You know, like the ray tracing is gone in the puddles. You know, it's not as like fancy pants looking all visually immediately like amazing, but it still looks great and it runs even better. Like, and I think that there's that nice happy medium. Neo 2 is fantastic. Yeah. Uh, 
performance action mode or whatever. Yeah. Is there any other mode? Like, I don't even care what the other one looks like. <laughs> right. I, I, like, I started it up and I was like, oh, it's dirty. And then change it. <laughs> right. And as much as I'm somebody that, that will attest to, you know, feeling like ray tracing really is where, like, the next generation is headed. Um, yeah. You know, I played Control, which I thought was one of the best examples of ray tracing in 2019 and maybe even still today. Um, you know, I, I definitely wanted ray tracing on, but I was still targeting 60 FPS. You know, yeah. I I would if it came between like ray tracing and 30 FPS or 60 FPS with no ray tracing, I would probably choose the frame rate. But yeah. in any other circumstance, if I can hit 60 and have ray tracing, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll take it all day. Like, yeah, I really think point. that's that's where we're going with reflections for shadows and glass and a bunch of yeah. other stuff like that's kind of the first steps of what we're going to be able to see and then you know beyond complete path trace but um yeah no i just uh i'm in the same boat where especially after playing on pc for so long and um, have, yeah, especially cool. playing games in the same vein too so to speak where like you know i played destiny on or destiny 2 rather on xbox and playstation and then once i graduated and uh got a pc and they enabled Graduated. cross save listen to this guy <laughs> <laughs> right once i grew got, up got it on pc hey. um it's hard to go back to play the same yeah. game at these two different frame rates to where it's like if i ever saw that on pc i'd think something is going wrong <laughs> <laughs> it's, so true. it's true though it's like, but like, it's not working yeah and that's why um i don't like i don't have as much of an issue with 30 frames on um on console because it's like oftentimes that's the only place i've played it yeah. now I've, I've even used geforce now to stream and play destiny 2 a little bit with you on pc and it's like if i tried to play it on pc ps4 even streaming it i was like oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh so man. like like if the, if the last of us 2 <laughs> was played on pc at 60 frames 4k and i've tried to play it on ps4 i would it would be a bummer, you know. Wouldn't yeah. wouldn't be as cool. So like, but uh, still held up and visually stunning for a console from two thousand what thirteen. Yeah, Three, yeah, two thousand thirteen. Like, I think was the year they launched. So it's time. But I guess yeah. And the pro was a few years yeah, later. Mid gen. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But um, yeah. I, I performance baby. Like just give every game an option. Just give yep. every game an option. If you can't I, target sixty and look the best it can. Options. Yep, uh, I'm in the same boat. Uh, again, you know, hearkening back to PC, I know hey, developers sometimes don't like, you know, developing for two different consoles, like the difference between the Xbox Series X and Series S because there's differences in hardware. Um, but I definitely am a man of options. Like, it, you know, get, well, I have like a you PC said, even, even and an with, Xbox and a even, PS4. <laughs> right, even with consoles, <laughs> just give me an option. Give me the, the, the best looking that I can get where I'm going to sacrifice my frame rate so this thing can be so ding dang beautiful that my eyes are blown apart from the inside out. <laughs> or give me the option to target the, the, the frame rate to have a consistent, high, smooth gameplay. And yeah, I'll take the hit to the visuals and, and I'll be the one yeah. that's making that decision. And that's totally fine. I, it, but yes, give people the choice to experience it how they want to. Yeah, because like... Um, I think No Man's Sky is a great example because it's like you can on console. It's like if well, I think it changed it now. So this might be I think in Origins you can change it now. But before Origins, the most recent update, it was like if your console was set to 4K, the game was 4K. If your console settings were set to 1080p, the game would be 1080p. At 1080p, the game ran better. But I don't want to switch my entire console settings to do that. Like it's right. crazy. So, right. I think now they have an option for stuff, but it still doesn't run that great. Yeah, I want to say that there's something with um, dynamic resolution scaling or something too in that game. Um, but yeah, I, I I do think options in game menu are the way to go. Not, don't make yeah. me go out to the system settings. Don't make me change but a bunch of stuff. And then in the settings, if you've got two modes, that's cool. But also let me turn off motion blur. Let me turn off film grain. Let me turn off chromatic aberration or whatever the hell you guys think looks cool, but it doesn't. Yeah. Get it out of there. Like, <laughs> I just get that post-processing stuff out of there. Um, sometimes it looks great, but like, I don't know. Give me the option to at least dial it down. 
Yeah. I don't need, I don't need you, motion blur. Definitely. I already have bad eyesight. Definitely. Right. I, I always turn off motion blur, too, when I can. Yeah. I think it only works in if it's 30 FPS, motion blur can be beneficial. I can see that. Um, and, oh, yeah. But kind most... Like smooth it, I guess. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. But, yeah, no, just get, get, get rid of that junk. I don't want to play that game. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs> uh... Well, that's kind of the end of the bullet points for this week. Um, Chase, you got anything else that you want to talk about or say? No, I'm just, uh, this is pretty sick, man. I'm glad we're doing this. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, Again, we are the Game Club Coalition. I'm Sean, and this is Chase. This has been Game Chat Episode 1. If you enjoyed what you saw today or watched, um, you know, like, share, subscribe. We're going to be doing more on this in the future. We're going to be sort of experimenting with at least this game chat, game chat show, weekly rack, wrap up, whatever, at least yeah. once a week, possibly doing some other streaming and stuff. So uh, if you want to be along the ride for a uh, new growing channel, as well as uh, just like our personalities or mesh with, you know, um, got any questions, leave them down in the comments below and uh, we'll catch you next time. Yeah, yeah. Peace. <laughs>